I thought it would be really cool to sort of talk about a few trips that I've been on before, mainly China. And Every single day for 30, well, this will be 32 days, I've done two daily videos. And I thought I'd just make a quick video about the best things that you can, not the best things you can do in China, but the, the coolest things that I found there were to do in China. Number one, I think the best thing, you know, the, actually I'll tell you what, these aren't going to be in any particular order. These are just going to be things that I thought were cool, things that I thought were really nice to do. So I stayed in Beijing for the first week or so of my trip. And in Beijing, obviously when you're in Beijing, you've got to climb the Great Wall of China. This is probably one of the most famous things about China, I would say, for a tourist especially. Um, I don't know, there are lots of other things as well, but the Great Wall of China is one of those sort of landmark, benchmark things that you just have to do when you're in China. So definitely climb that. But I would recommend going to the section I went to, which is the less touristy section. Um, this is not the place with Starbucks built into the wall, um, believe it or not, that's actually real. This is a place sort of a lot further on, a few miles further on, where you're pretty much going to be the only one on the wall. You know, there's not going to be many tourist groups in the place I went to. I'll try and think, remember the name of this place, by the way, um, and I'll try and put it in the description. But if not, I guess find it. <laughs> so sticking with Beijing, the other thing you should do is go and visit the Jinshang uh, Park. Jinshang Park. This is a huge area of natural beauty there's obviously paths and things that have been kept as you know by gardeners and things but most of it is just really nice beautiful lush gardens so definitely definitely check out the Jinshan Park. I believe that's also quite near to Beihai Park which is more or less you know much of the same um, I think I can't remember which one but one of them has loads of water like lakes and things like that and the other one is more garden based but they're both pretty close to each other like you could walk from one to the other quite easily. Next we have the Forbidden City. This is a massive, I think it used to be a, or still is uh, in some respect a government building, I might be wrong. Um, again I'm not very I'm not very clued up on the culture of these sorts of things at the moment, I just tend to go wherever looks interesting to visit but Forbidden City is a massive open sort of uh, building, collection of buildings um, it's always busy and I would advise you to get your tickets early because they can actually sell out and then when they when they sell out they don't let anybody else in. Okay so the next one is Lama Temple. This is I think where the origins of Buddhism were founded. I, I think this is a really this is a really interesting place and there's a definite vibe here of like spirituality obviously and like calmness and serenity. Really well worth checking out. Um, I would advise to get one of the tours which actually takes you all around the whole place and explains the history behind everything so you can learn you know what different things mean what the symbols mean and, and why it's all there. So next I would say go to Hong Kong. Before we get into this video guys please make sure to subscribe leave a like and as you're watching leave a comment letting me know have you been to these places you know would you like to go that sort of thing. It seems to be some sort of like divide between Hong Kong and China in which they very much like to keep to themselves and not intermingle too much. I don't know why I'm sure there's a history behind it but anyway I went to Hong Kong after Beijing and in Hong Kong so just on your first day I would suggest going to the peak tram area. This is basically a giant train which goes at sort of 45 degree angles up the mountain to the very top where you can see, I think it's the highest point in Hong Kong and it just sort of gives you that bird's eye view of the whole place. You can get some great photos there, great video clips and uh, you know those Instagram photos that you're dying to get I, I imagine. And it's also just a place where you can take in how big Hong Kong is. It's a place where you can just sort of look down and think, right, okay, we're going to be here for a while. You know, we'll go over there for this day and then over there for this day. And it's a good a good sort of way of uh, setting yourself up for the trip and, you know, getting, getting it into your head how big Hong Kong is and how much there is to see. Next is the 10,000 Buddha Monastery. This is a really fascinating place. There are literally at least 10,000 tiny Buddhas, like in various sizes. So you've got giant Buddha statues as you walk up towards the temple. Um, and each one has a slightly different facial expression or a slightly different posture that they're doing with their hands or arms. You won't find any two Buddha statues the same. And I found this really amazing. It must have taken a very long time to build and, you know, place all of these statues. There's also Quarry Bay, which is, um, let me explain, Quarry Bay is basically an area of Hong Kong where living spaces are really tightly packed in together. 
it's where you know you've got the, some of the most dense living quarters in the world um, where they're just pack they packed people in skyscrapers all facing into a central sort of rectangular courtyard and you know on the bottom area you've got a couple of little shops facing into the courtyard and then as you go up as, as you look up the the skyscrapers on all four sides you have tiny tiny apartments all facing each other it's kind of a famous, especially on Instagram, lots of people get a picture of them at the bottom looking up at the skyscrapers. There's also the Hong Kong Zoo, which is not really advertised as much as it should be, but it's basically a giant free zoo in the middle of Hong Kong. You can walk to it fairly easily from certain parts of Hong Kong, um, but it's just a giant zoo. It's on several levels. It's kind of an intense walk, I guess, if it's hot, if it's a hot day. But in the central area, you've got lots and lots of monkeys in giant tall cages. You've got things on the outskirts, birds, that sort of thing. There's a giant turtle there. Pretty much the biggest turtle or, or tortoise um, I've ever seen is there as well. So that's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, it's all free. So next, we've got these These two are sort of combined in Hong Kong. You've got the giant Buddha, the Tiantan, I think it's called the Tiantan Buddha uh, statue, which is that famous thing with massive load of steps leading up to this giant Buddha on the top of the mountain. You can see it from, you know, if you do a helicopter tour or if you fly over that particular area, it's, it's that big. Um, and then next to that, or, you know, sort of a half an hour, 20 minute walk from there, you've got the Wisdom Path. And this is a really fascinating place. I found it really amazing. It's basically a giant sort of hike through the mountains and then in the central part of the path you have these massive um, trees that have been sort of split down the middle and then sanded off and then massive um, sort of Chinese symbols have been carved into these trees. It's really amazing and it's a great place to just sort of relax and enjoy nature. I really want to go back there in winter and just see it covered in snow. But yeah, it's a really amazing place. Next, we've got Llama Island. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about in this vlog because it's gone on for a while. Llama Island is essentially a tiny fishing island, but there aren't really that many shops. It's not, you know, a huge tourist hub, although lots of tourists go there simply to enjoy the, the walks around the island. We took the family trail, which is not actually that intense, although it's, it takes a while. Um, it's all on one path. It's all a concreted path and you know, you sort of know where you're going at any one time There's a couple of beautiful beaches on the island, which I would highly recommend checking out um, That being said it is an entire day trip because you have to get the MTR to the, uh, the Ferry port you have to go to a ferry port and then you have to take a ferry to the island and then from the ferry port Doing the, the family trail and coming back again. It does take a few hours and especially if it's a hot day You want to stop for lunch. It's gonna take most of your day. It's not somewhere you can just go sort of to kill a couple of hours, it's going to take most of the day. That being said, I wouldn't miss it. If you have a spare day, definitely go to Lama Island. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you want to go to China and Hong Kong. I would actually suggest that if you go, you sort of combine the two, because they're so close together. Uh, you know, it's, it doesn't really make sense to only go to one and then come back home, wherever you live, and then go back to Hong Kong or back to China.